she earned every bit of that. Yo, I heard that he beat us so bad he sent her to Hawaii. <laughs> that, so she could stay away from people. That's crazy, man. But that's Kim's story. That's Kim's book. That's Kim's book. Then you hear about the fact that he he broke Kim's nose on a yacht? You're right. In a now deleted video, I'll be sure said that he did not believe that Kim Porter died due to pneumonia. So people for a while now have speculated that there was more to Kim Porter in her death. And there have been a lot of conversations, especially now with everything that Diddy is facing, there's been more speculation, more people want a case open when it comes to how did Kim Porter really die? All of these uh, big de deviants is all catching hell in 2024. It's up for all of them. It don't matter if you Diddy or whoever you is. TGJ, any of them, the, all, every, all lies will be exposed. Diddy might have been after Kim Porter's death and he will finally be held accountable for it. Cassie's lawsuit against Diddy was like opening Pandora's box. After she dropped those bombshells, it was like a floodgate of allegations against Diddy burst wide open. And now Diddy's been caught up in all sorts of shady dealings, from smuggling to mistreatment. But one story that's really got people talking is Kim Porter's. Her mysterious death has had people wondering if Diddy was behind it for years. And now, we might be getting closer to the truth. First off, let's talk about Kim's tragic passing. Back in 2018, she was found unresponsive at her home, and despite Despite efforts from emergency services, she didn't make it. At just 47 years old, it seems strange that someone so young and seemingly healthy would suddenly kick the bucket, supposedly from pneumonia. But hold up, that didn't quite add up for some people, especially considering Kim had reportedly been battling the flu, not pneumonia. So what's the real story here? Kim and Diddy first crossed paths in the late 80s when Kim was working as a receptionist at Uptown Records. Sparks flew, but there was a little snag. Kim was already hitched to singer Al B, sure. But that didn't didn't stop Diddy from making moves once the coast was clear. Fast forward to 94, they were an item, and by 97, they had their first son, Christian. But here's where it gets messy. Diddy bounced faster than a ping pong ball, straight into Jennifer Lopez's arms. Yeah, you heard that right. Diddy's romance with J-Lo hit the headlines, and poor Kim found out about it on social media like the rest of us. Talk about a low blow. But here's the kicker. Kim didn't bat an eyelid. She just kept it cool and carried on with her life. But it wasn't all sunshine and rainbows. Turns out Diddy had a bit of a control freak streak. He had people tailing Kim, bugging her phone, you name it. And that's not even the worst of it. There were allegations of him slipping her drugs and trying to manipulate her every move. Like seriously, who does that? And when things went south and Kim started showing interest in someone else, Diddy allegedly lured her onto a boat and things got heated, leaving Kim with a broken nose. Talk about a toxic roller coaster of a relationship. Now let's talk lawsuits. Kim wasn't about to let Diddy off the hook without a fight. She filed for child support, but surprise, surprise, dropped the case when J-Lo dumped Diddy and he came crawling back to Kim in 2003. You'd think Kim would have given him the boot after the way he left her high and dry the first time around, but nope, there they were, back together again. And before anyone could blink, Kim was pregnant with twins. It was like a fairy tale in the making, except it wasn't. Because despite the whole happy family facade, Diddy never popped the question. But let's be real, maybe it's for the best. Kim never walked down the aisle with Diddy. Rumor has it, he treated her just like he did Cassie. And let me tell you, that's not a pretty picture. Five Five months before welcoming his twin girls, Diddy had another baby with his side piece, Sarah Chapman. But get this, Kim wasn't blindsided. Nope, she knew about it all along. She even hired a private investigator to keep tabs on Diddy. Talk about keeping your enemies close. When Diddy finally fessed up, Kim was like, boy, bye. She packed her bags, including the nursery furniture, and bounced. And she did it in style, too. Kim wanted Diddy to know she wasn't playing games. She wanted drama, and she got it. She walked out of his life without a second thought. And honestly, who can blame her? Now, let's Let's talk about Kim's tragic demise. The first coroner's report ruled it a homicide, with toxins found in her body. Yeah, you read that right, poison. Some people suspected Diddy, but nothing came of the investigation. Still, fans couldn't shake the feeling that something wasn't right. And then there's Al B. Sure, despite their divorce, he was devastated by Kim's passing. He posted a cryptic message hinting that Kim didn't just die from pneumonia. He talked about her being on the run, in touch 
with the FBI. It's like something out of a thriller movie. If there's one thing all these allegations against Diddy have proven, it's that he's capable of some seriously shady stuff. So, if Kim was really on the run from someone, that someone must have been Diddy himself. I mean, come on, it's not exactly far-fetched, considering Diddy's track record. I had no clue, Al B wrote in a since-deleted Instagram post in 2020. I do know very clearly that Kimberly didn't just check out all of a sudden over pneumonia. That's some bull really? This is where I get in trouble. We just celebrated our son O'Quincy's new deal and Christmas special with a Netflix, and she was in fantastic health as well, laughing seeing me and Diddy's mutual exchange at the theater. I'm going to leave it here. Back then, a lot of people brushed off Albie's claims as him struggling to cope with Kim's loss. But then something happened that sent shockwaves through the industry. Albie found himself fighting for his life in the hospital, battling health complications. And given the timing, many suspected foul play, especially since Diddy's been accused of taking people out before. Two Pac, Biggie, you name it. But let's talk motive. Why would Diddy want to silence Kim? Well, there's a theory that she was writing a tell-all book exposing Diddy for who he really is. I mean, think about it. She'd been by his side for 13 years. If anyone knew where the skeletons were buried, it was her. And let me tell you, those skeletons weren't pretty. Three out of the big five who founded Uptown Records, all six feet under. And what were they working on before they kicked the bucket? Tell-all books, Andre, Heavy D, they were all set to spill the tea. Coincidence? I think not. So here's the kicker. Kim Kim probably had enough dirt on Diddy to bury him six feet under too, and when you've got that kind of leverage, you're playing with fire. But guess what? Her place got broken into after her passing, and her laptop, the one with all the juicy details, was swiped. Talk about suspicious, right? In 2022, Diddy found himself in hot water again when his former nanny, Jane Rowe, sued him for wrongful termination. Apparently, she was responsible for taking care of the twins after Kim's passing, and the girls absolutely adored her. But when she asked for maternity leave, Diddy gave her the boot. His reason she was setting a bad example by getting pregnant out of wedlock. Um, excuse me. But here's where it gets twisted. Jane claimed to be Kim's niece. Yeah, you heard me right. And let's just say Diddy wasn't too thrilled about that. See, if she really was Kim's niece, her loyalty would always be to Kim, not Diddy. And that, my friends, made her a threat to Diddy's empire. Diddy clapped back, calling the lawsuit extortion and saying Jane ain't even related to Kim. His crew said the gig was always temporary since the twins were getting older and spending more time at school. But Jane wasn't backing down. She pursued her case, convinced that Diddy had it out for her because of her connection to Kim. And honestly, can you blame her? Jane and Al B sure aren't the only ones pointing fingers at Diddy. Kim's BFF, Kamora Lee, isn't exactly Diddy's biggest fan either. Rumor has it that Diddy threatened to kick her in the stomach while she was pregnant. But despite her disdain for Diddy, Kamora's loyalty to Kim never wavered. She was devastated by Kim's passing, rushing to her house in tears when she heard the news. And years later, she's still Team Kim, calling out Diddy on Instagram and even pushing for for authorities to reopen Kim's case. And get this, there are rumors that Cassie, Diddy's ex, turned over video footage and a burner phone to the FBI. Allegedly, Kim gave her the phone just days before her passing, and it supposedly contains some damning evidence against Diddy. Now let's talk about how Cat Williams has been dropping truth bombs left and right about Diddy. I mean, this dude's been on a mission to expose all the creeps and snakes in the industry, and Diddy's right up there on his hit list. In his Club Shay Shay interview, Cat straight up called out Diddy, saying this is the year he finally gets exposed. And guess what? He wasn't playing. He even spilled the tea on how he turned down 50 million. Yeah, you heard me right. Just to protect his integrity. That's some serious commitment to staying true to himself. And why'd he turn down all that cash? Because he didn't want to party with the likes of Diddy. Now, I've had to turn down 50 million dollars four times. Four times just to protect my integrity and that virgin hole I was telling you about. <laughs> right. Because uh, B. Diddy be wanting to body. And you gotta tell him no. <laughs> now, fast forward to last week. Homeland Security rolls up to Diddy's cribs in Miami and Los Angeles, raiding them like it's a scene from a movie. And get this. Diddy allegedly dipped out to some private island, leaving his kids behind to deal with the heat. So what's the deal with the raid? Well, it's allegedly related to some trafficking allegations that have been swirling around Diddy lately. And it's not the first time he's been accused of some shady stuff. Remember Cassie's lawsuit from back in November 2023? She dropped some serious allegations, accusing Diddy of a decade of abuse, manipulation, and control. According to Cassie, Diddy was out here forcing her to be with other dudes for his pleasure, organizing freaky sessions where she couldn't even consent, and even putting his hands on her. And that's just the tip of the iceberg. But here's the kicker. Diddy settled with Cassie real quick, probably hoping to sweep it all under the rug. But the truth always comes out. Since Cassie came forward, there have been four more lawsuits against Diddy Diddy, and they ain't playing around. The latest one came from Lil Rod, who used to produce for Diddy's Love album. Lil Rod's out here accusing Diddy of all sorts of
lots of twisted stuff from Rico offenses and beyond. But here's where it gets real interesting. Lil Rod didn't just go after Diddy. Oh no, he named some heavy hitters as his co-defendants, like Christina Corum, Diddy's chief of staff, Sir Lucian George, CEO of Universal Music Group, and even Ethiopia Habtamarium, former CEO of Motown Records. But that's not even the craziest part. Lil Rod also claimed that Diddy bragged about using his connections to clean up his mess from all these lawsuits. Like, imagine using your church connections to cover up your dirty deeds. Oh, and speaking of shady dealings, Young Miami's caught up in some drama too. Lil Rod's lawsuit just got a whole lot juicier, implicating Young Miami as part of Diddy's inner circle. Turns out she's allegedly Diddy's go-to for transporting a substance called pink or tea, which is like a mix of coke and ecstasy. And get this, Diddy's got a taste for the stuff. But hold up, there's more. This lawsuit claims Young Miami's on Diddy's payroll, getting that monthly check to do his dirty work. She's accused of bringing the goods to Diddy's dressing room, even flying it in on private jets. And it ain't just her. There's a whole list of women getting that Diddy dough, from Koresha to Daphne Joy. So Young Miami's been keeping mum about those allegations, but her Twitter game has been raising some eyebrows. First off, she drops a tweet saying, this finna be a fun summer. Then when someone asks where she's at, she hits back with, right here, what's up? Some people thought she seemed a little too chipper for someone caught up in a lawsuit with the feds sniffing around. And it gets wilder. She's been tweeting some cryptic stuff that's got people thinking she's been deep in whatever shady business Diddy had going on. Like, check this tweet where she straight up says, if I wanted you to eat my pee, Diddy would have had you on your knees. Yeah, it's as wild as it sounds. People started speculating that maybe she's singing like a canary already. And you know who else agrees that Diddy's got a whole squad of enablers? Cat Williams. He's been dropping truth bombs left and right, and he ain't holding back. He recently shared this messed up clip from an old Nickelodeon show where Diddy's suggesting some seriously sketchy stuff to wake up a sleeping friend. Cat Williams got on the internet and he insinuated that Diddy has some type of connection to the situation going on at Nickelodeon with Dan Schneider and all the executives over there. If you don't know what's been going on, check this out. This is Dan Schneider. Dan Schneider is an executive or a former executive at Nickelodeon, and he was accused of taking advantage of the child actors on the TV shows that he had, going inside them, doing a whole bunch of nasty, freaky stuff uh, to these kids that he had working for him, bro. And so Diddy did an episode with this guy, or this guy produced the episode on one of the Nickelodeon shows for Diddy, and um, Cat Williams reposted the video of the episode, and it was a lot of inappropriate imagery, bro. I'm gonna show you guys this. So Cat posted this right here. This is what he posted in his story on Instagram. And you guys can see it was about 15 hours ago now. Um, but this is what the video was. Pay attention, you guys. Look at the guy on the couch. Look at the guy on the couch. Y'all seen him? Hold on. I'm going to go back a little bit. Look at the guy on the couch covered in white, sticky liquid, bro. Look it. Y'all see it? It's the imagery, bro. Y'all got to watch this stuff. Look at him. What is that, bro? Take this toy helicopter, put it down his pants. Then look, this is the next scene. I paused it, but look, that's the next scene. Look, look, y'all. Dan Schneider wrote this scene. Tell me, before I even continue with it, bro, tell me how a toy helicopter down his pants is gonna help him wake up. Come on, y'all. Check this out, man. Try this. <laughs> Pay attention. This kid covered in his white liquid. Look at it. It's the imagery, bro. So Cat Williams is saying that Diddy must have a little connection to Dan Schneider or something to even agree to do something like this. And the symbolism of Hollywood, we know it's Holly weird, bro. Um, but the symbolism of that video right there, that's what Cat Williams is talking about. Obviously, when we look at it as adults, we look at this and go, what, what is going on here? This whole thing is weird. 
and now hearing about what's going on with Quiet on the set, Dan Schneider, all that different stuff coming forward, we know it's all weird, bro. But this is a serious thing, man. I think, um, you know, I appreciate Cat Williams for even sharing this because I would have never saw this. When you was a kid, you looked at these things differently. You looked at it, it was, it was silly, it was entertaining, it's funny. But when you become an adult and you realize that adults are writing these scripts, adults are setting these scenes up, adults are putting these images on, on, the, uh, on the show, you hear it, you, you can see it a little different, bro. So, um, yeah, this whole thing is weird, bro. But that's what Cat Williams posted, bro. Share it for the world to see. And, um, you know, I have to bring it here to the platform. So thank you guys for watching. Urban Legend 11, you know what it is, bro. Like, seriously disturbing stuff. And get this, the script was apparently approved by Dan Schneider, who's been called out for shady stuff with young stars on Nickelodeon shows. But wait, there's more. Remember that rant where Cat called out Diddy and Jermaine Dupri for being up to no good? What's happening, Puff? I'll be back to you if JD ain't had enough. <laughs> yeah. Jermaine Dupree, king of files if you ask me, baby. Shh. Yeah, turns out Jermaine's got his own set of accusations against him, allegedly messing around with boy band Criss Cross back in the day. And you know how these things go. Where there's smoke, there's usually fire. Now here's where it gets real juicy. Word on the street is that Diddy's been playing chess while everyone else is playing checkers. He allegedly covered his tracks, getting recordings of all the big names who hit up his parties. Like he had the inside scoop on who was doing what, when, and where. Even 50 Cent chimed in, backing up the rumors about Diddy's secret stash of blackmail tapes. He straight up said he'd drop stacks to get his hands on those vids. Like, he's convinced there's some dirt on everyone who's ever hit up a Diddy party. He wrote, This is gonna be so good, what you want to bet, I'ma get these tapes. I'll pay top dollar for them. After dropping hints about Diddy's dirt, he started pointing fingers at none other than Jay-Z. Yeah, you heard me right. Fiddy went on a posting spree, making it seem like Jay might be in cahoots with Diddy. Check this out. 50 shared a pic of a milk carton with Jay-Z's face plastered on it, captioned with, Anybody seen Jay lol? Puff said he ain't answering his phone. LOL. Then he posts a pic of Jay waving, claiming it's the last time anyone saw him, supposedly waving at Puffy's jet. Now, the idea that Jay Z and Diddy are tight isn't new. There have been rumors before about Jay being just as shady as Diddy, maybe even worse. Some people have tossed around the P word, hinting at Jay's questionable taste in uh, romantic interests. I'm talking about his thing for younger ladies, from Beyonce to Aaliyah to Foxy Brown. And hold up, there's more drama. Remember Jaguar, right? Yeah, she's been spilling tea on Jay for ages. She dropped a bomb about Jay allegedly messing around with Rihanna when she was just 15, even saying he gave her some disease. Now, Rihanna was only 14, 15 when he started to around and turned to the death chair. It's clear to say that the herpes that she had came from the person she had been most truly involved with, and that was Sean Carter. Jay Z gave her the herpes that she gave to Chris Brown. And that first night, Crazy, right? Now, Jaguar's been on Jay's case for ages, saying he's just like Diddy, but smarter and meaner. Mm, so you were worried about him coming to get you? Yeah, like everybody else is. According to her, Jay's been playing the long game, setting up his pals to take the fall while he stays clean. She ain't pulling punches, calling him out for being sneaky and ruthless. His death made it possible for reasonable doubt to live. Whoa. See how good I keep secrets, Sean? And I'm gonna tell you something else and I'll give you this one for free. Big L better than you do, good. I'd rather be with that dead man than ever be with you. So how do you know how Jay-Z get down? You know that from experience or? Don't worry about that part, I'll tell him on the stand. Now, rumor has it that Diddy's ready to spill the beans on all his partners in crime. He isn't about to take the fall alone. It's like a game of who's gonna snitch first in this Hollywood drama. Now, it isn't a stretch to think Diddy's about to start singing like a canary because rumors about him being a snitch ain't new. Remember back in 2022 when Kanye's texts with Diddy leaked? You straight up called him out saying, never call me with no like that again unless you ready to green light me. Come do something illegal to me, no please. And Puff's response, as soon as I land, we'll meet face to face. And let's not forget about Sugi Knight's creepy message from jail to Diddy. He straight up warned Diddy that his life's in danger because of the secrets he knows. You gotta make a decision. When you go to prison, either you're gonna be standing up pissing or squatting sitting down pissing. I advise you to try to take the first one. Diddy, ain't nobody gonna be playing with you, man. Turn yourself in, you bogus. Your life's in danger. If you know the secrets, 
who's involved in that little secret room you guys participate in. So, you know they're going to get you if they can. Like, what kind of secrets are we talking about here? Now, Diddy's former bodyguard, Gene, is out here saying Diddy would off himself before he ends up in jail. And you knowing him, do you think it's possible that he might commit suicide? When you're a narcissist, there's always a possibility because you're suffering. But I don't think that he could see himself in the cage. I don't think he can see himself behind those bars in those type of situations. It's too many real dudes that dislike him. But then again, there's a lot of real dudes that need help. And him being behind bars, <laughs> he could probably help them. That's some heavy stuff, but with Homeland Security supposedly sitting on a mountain of dirt on Diddy, it's looking like he might not be able to dodge this bullet. And it ain't just the law coming for him. Former Motown CEO is allegedly ready to spill the tea in court too. But check this out. Fans are rallying behind the truth, especially after what Cat Williams went through. Some think 2024 is going to be the year Diddy's secrets get exposed for real. Now, a source has recently spoken about Kim and Diddy's relationship. They said that when Kim passed away, it hit Diddy hard. It was a huge shock and a turning point. All the other women in his life were playthings. Kim was the real deal. It was all downhill from there. And Diddy really fooled everyone after Porter's death when he expressed his grief on Instagram. For the last three days, I've been trying to wake up out of this nightmare. But I haven't. I don't know what I'm going to do without you, baby. I miss you so much. Today, I'm going to pay tribute to you. I'm going to try and find the words to explain our unexplainable relationship. We were more than best friends. We were more than soulmates. We were some other ST. And I miss you so much. Super black love. But but now Jean Deal just dropped a bombshell claiming that Kim Porter once had to defend herself by slashing Diddy's wrists. So if they really were Sul Matisse, why did she have to protect herself against him? It just doesn't make sense. In a recent interview with The Art of Dialogue, Deal spilled the tea about Diddy's love album track dedicated to Porter. He hinted that honoring someone you love might mean bearing scars, even on your wrist, as a symbol of that love. But then, Deal dropped a bombshell. One night, while chilling at Kim's crib, Diddy allegedly crossed a line and Kim fought back. On that particular case, no. Have I seen him rough Kim up and use the pillow? They, they, you know, he, he like to play fight and be hurting the girls while he play fight. Have I seen him do that? Yeah, I, I've seen him done that. You understand? And I've asked him, you all right? You good? You know, y'all good? And she just looked and stuff. He'll stop. You know what I'm saying? Because I was like a big uncle one time. So now, when he get to the hospital, his right wrist is ripped open so mr deal uh when you got to the hospital what happened well i seen his wrist ripped up i will testify that i seen his uh wrist uh wrapped up in a uh, um uh, uh t-shirt and he said it right there in front of kim you know what i'm saying that Yo, you could have killed him because she hit an artery. She apparently grabbed a corkscrew and left Diddy with some nasty wrist wounds, hitting an artery in the process. Diddy had to rush to St. Luke's Hospital for emergency care. With Diddy's personal life thrust into the spotlight after his homes were raided, the source disclosed that the rapper has undergone significant changes over the years. I'm very surprised at how ugly and dark this is, the insider remarked on the recent allegations. We were close. Something has gone very wrong. This isn't what he used to be about. Although Diddy hasn't directly spoken about the raids, his lawyer released a statement saying, Last week, there was a gross overuse of military-level force as search warrants were executed at Mr. Combs' residences. There is no excuse for the excessive show of force and hostility exhibited by authorities or the way his children and employees were treated. Mr. Combs was never detained but spoke to and cooperated with authorities. Despite media speculation, neither Mr. Combs nor any of his family members have been arrested nor has their ability to travel been restricted in any way. The statement continued, There has been 
been no finding of criminal or civil liability with any of these allegations. Mr. Combs is innocent and will continue to fight every single day to clear his name. Well, if anyone knew Diddy's dirty little secrets, it was Kim Porter and her sudden demise? Yeah, it's got conspiracy theorists and fans alike screaming foul play. One said, I 100% don't believe how Kim Porter died. I believe Diddy got her killed. And another wrote, don't think for a second that Dr. Jay-Z and Beyonce didn't know what was going on with Diddy, Kim Porter, and Cassie. Cheesing from ear to ear, shaking each other hands, and steady doing snake. All these celebrities are very FK and quiet. Will authorities finally crack the case? Only time will tell. But one thing's for sure, Diddy's past is coming back to haunt him, and he might not be able to outrun it this time. What do you think? Let us know. And if you like this video, you will like this next one even more.